Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 109. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. Alright, so we're here now for the uh, F355 Challenge Trophy. Uh, it's a new stream. I'm still a bit bunged up in the nose. Um, I've now got a cough, but the headache... And, like, the ear pressure has all sort of gone. Um, my hearing's still not, not back. It's a bit odd. But, yeah, everything else is, should be fine. Uh, we're going to be starting off with Sunset Peninsula, New York Circuit, Silverstone, Sedona Raceway, Camino Valle de Montserrat. I can't do the thing. Because it just sounds like I've, you know, died. Been Stabbed it in the throat or something. Uh, and then the Le Mans circuit, Bugatti circuit. Let's get going. Honestly, if God of War Ragnarok doesn't get game of the year, I'm going to be so confused. Is my hair wet? No, it's just messy. I haven't sorted it out. It's called Bedhead. It's where you sleep, you wake up, and you don't fucking touch it for the day. <laughs> Looks terrible. I know. Come on, little Ferrari. Go. Meow. And the irony of it, as soon as I start an event, my nose starts just pissing mucus everywhere. Ooh. It's a Ferrari. It's a Ferrari. It's a yellow Ferrari. I still think yellow Ferraris look better than red ones. Don't come at me. They do look better. But. Every Ferrari looks good. In either red. Yellow or blue. Like every Ferrari. Looks good in those colours. It's one of those things that Ferrari are like one of those companies that every single car they've made has aged well. They look amazing. Even the new Roma, a lot of people don't really like that that much, but I think it looks really good. Like Ferrari just has this charm and the designers are, I'll be honest, are the most talented graphics designers in the world. To be able to make a car look as good as the Ferraris do. It go fast and win the race. Unless you're Ferrari Formula 1. In which case you ruin the strategy. And then you end up finishing last. But yeah. Every Ferrari looks good. In red, blue and yellow. Some Ferraris look okay in silver. But like. For you to have like a yellow Ferrari or a red Ferrari or a blue Ferrari and every time you look at it, it's like, wow, that looks good. It's very rare a car company has managed to do that. Rolls downhill after blowing up while Sites is still getting out. <laughs> the poor bastard. Yeah, I mean, if you, um, compared to like... Uh, Koenigsegg's a bad example, because Koenigsegg, every single car looks good. Uh, when you compare it to... Ah, oh, fair enough. Appreciate it, Kodo. Legend. Uh, when you compare to... Obviously, Koenigsegg is another brand. Koenigsegg and Ferrari are, like, the only two brands that can make cars where all of them look good. Um... Ford, for example. Some Fords look great. Some Fords look terrible. Some Fords only look good in certain colours, but look terrible in other colours. It's a very weird thing. 
It's like Ferrari has this like Aston Martin as well. There's another brand where some of their cars look amazing in one colour but look terrible in another. That um, Aston Martin V12 Vantage we used in the last stream, I believe it was race. Might have actually been the last championship that we did. Um, that car looks hideous. Just in general, it's a really odd looking car. But the 177, one of my favourite looking Aston Martins. That one obviously has to be in thingy. How did Ford steal from Aston? Is that about that, um... There's a story I read about how the grill on some of the Fords are similar to the shape that Aston Martin do. It's a bit odd. But it's... Yeah, the Mondeo. Um, I, I don't know whether it's real, though. Like, I don't know whether it's a legitimate Ford is stolen. Because... To be fair, Aston Martin has trademarked their design. I doubt Ford would have gotten away with it if they copied it. Either Ford have the most insane legal team in the world, or they, they wouldn't have gotten away with it. Not at all. Not a chance in hell. That's a bit bad. Cleared my nose. Somewhat. I can breathe through both of them, but this time it's now my throat that hurts, which I assume is what is now making my throat. Making my voice sound weird. Is the fact that my throat is fucked now and not my nose. Because I can breathe perfectly fine through both nostrils. BWT racing point moment. To be fair though, I'm on racing point side. They didn't really copy it. They just bought out the parts and that was a legal thing for a lot of Formula One. Um, the only problem was the brake ducts. Obviously, the rules around that got changed that year, but they had already had that development from the previous year, aka Mercedes development. Where they bought the parts out. So. To be honest. I don't think that Racing Point moment was actually. You know. Racing Point's fault. I'll be totally honest. Pikes Peak's a good. Good stage. Technically it's like a, like a rally stage isn't it. Because it's just point A to point B. Nasty, nasty. Do, 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 do. Well, yeah, isn't it about 10 point something kilometers, right? Or 16 kilometers, I'm not 100% sure. It's either 10 miles or 10 kilometers.
15.7 kilometers, which is about 10 miles. Oh, that was close. People in the room. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Uh, I don't, I don't think so. I'm not planning on buying it either. Because it plays like crap on Xbox. On Steam it's fine because it has the frame rate unlocked, but that's the one thing I don't like about consoles, and it, you can call me a PC snob all you want. I think that consoles limiting frames is only a good idea for people that have absolutely no experience whatsoever with games consoles. I mean, I can do, but I need game sharing with Tom at the moment. Yeah, that's fine. But if you're game sharing with Tom at the moment, we won't be able to do it because it uses up like an attempt. You can only swap like a couple of times a year or something like that. So. But by all means, I'll, I'll, I'll do a couple of races. Just be prepared to hear me complain about the fact that the frame rate is shit. Oh, crap. Yeah, that's, that is the one thing I hate about consoles, right? I understand that they have the frame rate limited and they have basic graphics options because there are people who have no gaming knowledge or no PC knowledge whatsoever. But for the people who do have knowledge that want maybe a slightly worse graphical experience but can unlock the frame rate, get f even 40 frames a second looks so much better than 30. It's only 10 frames, but that 10 frames makes it look like a cinematic gaming experience that's smooth than a jittery one. Movies work at 25 frames a second, but when you have a game that runs at 40 frames a second, you get that sort of similar experience. It's smooth enough that you can play. And again, I'll say the same thing with that. Drive Club. A Drive Club is an overrated game. End of discussion. If you think otherwise, you are the reason why it is an overrated game. It is not as amazing as people make it out to be. The weather looks good in that game, sure. But the weather looks good in Forza Motorsport 7. Looks good in Forza Motorsport 6. Both of those games ran at 60 FPS. I mean, Motorsport 7's wet weather simulation was crazy and that game came out like a year afterwards the, yeah there are a few examples and I'll, I'll give credit to one developer in particular and it is our enemy I'll be honest like the whole gaming industry hates them Ubisoft Joe, you know I'm just gonna carry on this we'll go straight into the second race and I'll just keep recording because this point is kind of valid. Ubisoft, right? Absolutely killer on how well they optimized Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I can't say for Origins because I haven't tried it. It would be Ubisoft. <laughs> Fuck off. Um, yeah, I haven't tried Assassin's Creed Origins yet. I really want to play it. I've bought it. I've bought the Gold Edition for Steam. So I'm ready to play it as soon as I finish Odyssey. It might be a while though, but it was on Black Friday sale, so I needed to get it while it was there. Um, but yeah, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, when running at 30 frames a second, is a stable experience. As long as it's at a stable 30. I've found that on the Steam Deck, right, even though the game runs at 40 frames no problem... It will sometimes dip anywhere from 35 frames to 55 frames a second. 
for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which, I mean, for a handheld system like the Steam Deck, that's already fucking out of this world. But I've found that 30 frames a second works for that. Racing games, on the other hand, no. 30 FPS does not work. I think the only game that I've ever played that's actually been enjoyable at 30 frames compared to 60, um, Motorstorm. That works pretty well at 30 frames a second. But that game isn't a hardcore racer or... I mean, when you think about it, something like Drive Club. That game should have had a 60 FPS mode. The fact that they didn't even aim for the weight simulator. Man, I'm so gutted that... I'll be honest, Drive Club... I hate Drive Club for the sole reason that it got rid of Motorstorm. Because the developers at Evolution Studios were like, Hmm, we're not going to make Motorstorm anymore, instead we're going to make something else. Right. Made Drive Club. Which again, is a really overrated game. I've tried it. It's not as great as people make it out to be. I downloaded it. Played it for like two, two hours to get a proper sort of play of it. Nothing special. No. Yeah, so... Fortnite Save the World is a game that should be at 60. Because it is a shooter game. Shooter games should be as smooth as possible for the best experience. That's why I don't like a lot of older shooter games that are on... Thingy. When it, when it comes to 30 frames in racing games, it needs to have a seriously arcade handling style. Things like Need for Speed can just about get away with it. But Need for Speeds are even better when they're in 60 FPS. Like, the game experience is just so much better in a 60 FPS mode. Um, 30 FPS, the only reason people may think it looks good is because of the fact that the graphics quality can be um, cranked up a little bit more in 30 FPS compared to 60. Because, well, if a game can't run at 60 FPS on medium, but it can run at 30 on high, you know, let's go on high. Um, but, when it comes to racing games, they are obviously, like, hands down, statistically are better in a smoother frame rate. It, it's more, as well, there's less frames, so if there are any graphical glitches, there are less frames for it to stick out more. A lot of the times in 30 frames a second, because it's so janky, you notice the frame, the time between the frames, more than you actually notice the frames themselves, especially when there's a little graphical glitch or something like that. Um, I mean, if WRC Generations was in 30 frames a second, uh, I can tell you right now that would be very difficult to play. Any of the WRC games in 30 frames a second are difficult to play because you don't have the reaction time to do fast laps. So you just have to rely on doing something, taking a more cautious line. Alright, get out of the fucking wall, you prick. Yeah, fi to, to be fair, WRC 5 is a lot easier because it's extremely arcade. Um, and it was built for, like, the PS Vita and stuff like that. So, it has a lot of, like, it, it's so arcade-y that it, simulation doesn't have an effect. And having 30 frames a second... No, 
No, I think GT7's rain effects are really good. I don't know what you mean by that, Zeno. Yeah, I mean, physics should always be at... Um, I think any simulation game, physics should be at 120 hertz. <coughs> oh god, fucking hell. It should be at 120 hertz. Minimum. Any game that's not simulating that is a bit silly. But again, like, Ubisoft did such a good job with Assassin's Creed Odyssey that 30 FPS is almost not preferable because I've played in 60 FPS and I do like how it looks. But go normally with a video game, when you swap between like a 60 FPS mode and a um, 30 FPS mode, it can look quite jarring when you're going back down. Odyssey is so well optimized for that lower frame rate. Um, I haven't tried Valhalla at 30 FPS. I doubt that's as well optimized because that was very much built for like next gen hardware. I'm pretty sure DLSS does exist on PS5 and stuff like that. Not 100% sure though. But I think they have something similar to that. Yeah, it's not... The, the AMD has their own thing. It's like Fidelity FX or something. The Steam Deck has FSR support, which I believe is... Um, basically DLSS, but AMD's CPU version. And honestly, when you have the Steam Deck, you turn every game with FSR on. It does mean that the CPU does more work. But for a handheld system where the GPU and the CPU are under the same chip. And they're being called by the same thing anyways. It makes more sense to just balance the loadout between both of them. And have them run in, at a lower temperature. Like honestly. FSR is like. I was playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And the fan was absolutely fucking mental. Like the graphics card was going up to like 80 degrees Celsius. Something like that. Um, on the Steam Deck. As soon as I enable FSR. My CPU goes from about 50 to 65. Degrees. But my graphics card comes down to 70. Like the graphics processor. The GPU. So. It, it just makes sense. Having. DLSS and stuff like that. Especially for like gaming. Because it does work. And it works really well. The only. I haven't got a drink on me actually. Zeno. Um, I will have to go grab one. I think the only use case where DLSS doesn't work is if you're a streamer which is basically me so whenever I'm playing like WRC Generations on stream I can't use FSR or DLSS or anything like that Kodo I hate to break it to you but cider with no alcohol is just fucking apple juice or pear juice with some flavoured syrups Yo, hands, what up? Guess who survived the afternoon shift with a flu? Ah. Join the bow. I'm basically doing... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say mech. I basically got the flu. Me nose is blocked up. Everything hurts. It's painful. How you doing there, hands? Hopefully you're having a good day. <laughs> yeah. Do you know one thing I didn't realize until the other day? Fruit flavored cider. Um Apple cider is obviously made of apples. Pear cider is made of pears. But a lot of fruit ciders 
are mostly just pear cider with some fruit flavor added to it. Did not realize that. I thought it was literally like a cider made out of those fruits, like summer fruits, you know. But it seems like an obvious thing, so that's why it's... But it is, most of them is just pear cider with flavoring added. It's crazy. Tango! Yeah, it's apple tango. This shit is amazing because it, it tastes really good and it's sugar-free. Like, you very rarely get like a sugar-free drink that actually tastes good. Like, if you have a uh, sugar-free orange Fanta, for example, that tastes like utter shit. It tastes like cheap orange drink, like orange fizzy stuff that you get. Like, Asda's own orange drink. Like, the two-liter pot bottles. Tastes so much better. Bitch. <laughs> Female dog, please be appropriate mod. <laughs> hey, appropriate moderators would use the word bitch. So be appropriate, hands. Break. <laughs> you silly bitch. <laughs> Mods don't be appropriate. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hey, keep the chat English. So I understand what you're saying. <laughs> I've gone into the gravel. Do 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 you know, that's one feature that Twitch actually should add. Um it should add auto captions and auto like translated captions. So you know how like when you go on YouTube you can have auto generated captions on all the stuff. That's one of the reasons I I used to for like some of my older YouTube videos. If I had like some voice lines or something, I'd put some captions for some of them. Uh, I don't do it anymore because the auto generated captions for YouTube are actually pretty good. Um, speak England or you shall receive warning of three. <laughs> yeah, but I think that actually would be a very good feature. Like, auto captions with translate so that Spanish people, Japanese people, German people, whatever, can all watch a stream in their first language and it should somewhat translate to roughly like obviously google translate is never perfect but it's good enough that you can somewhat understand what they mean like whenever anyone's translated anything from like spanish to english for me i still somewhat understand what they mean it's never perfect english but it does the job like google or Amazon quite easily has the budget to implement their own translate, Google Translate, whatever, into a caption thing. But also have like, if you select your chat language as Spanish, for example, it will translate all the languages from English to Spanish, for example, so that you read chat in Spanish. You can type in Spanish, but it translates to me so that everything is in English. Also translates for me. Obviously many websites do that. But why doesn't Twitch do it like as default? Twitch should do that. Be a really cool feature for them to add. Because then again. Right.
waste of money. I mean, to be fair, if they're going to talk about waste of money, Amazon has already wasted a shit ton of money with Alexa because people realize Alexa just isn't that great and that useful. People have bought all these Alexa products, but because they can't monetize Alexa or actually make Alexa somewhat sort of necessary, they can't make it a subscription model either. So Amazon has been on a strong decline of just, you know, wasting money for Amazon. Google Assistant, I think, is the only assistant that's actually been, like, fairly decent because they're actually able to monetize that quite well. And they can implement it a lot better into Android phones. That's why I prefer Google Assistant over... What's it called? Thank you for the posture check, by the way, Zeno. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> Big cough. I have done a COVID test. I am coronavirus negative. Which means I've got something else. Which, to be honest, when I had COVID, I felt a lot better then than I do now. So, everyone's saying... Obviously, the breathing problems, fair enough, I can't really relate to. But, like, people that were scared to get coronavirus, I think, was... Bit of a far stretch. Um, because it, it really hasn't done that bad. I think the reason why a lot of people got seriously ill from COVID was due to other things that were wrong with them that probably would have come up if they got any other flu. To be honest. Um, And I think because a lot of governments were like, oh, this is causing breathing problems. Because all these people that had, like, previous respiratory problems have come in with coronavirus and they're struggling to breathe. They've sort of just jumped the gun and, like, locked everything down. Majority of people use Android because they're cheaper, better for value. Cheaper does not equal better value. Um, it depends, you know. If you're comparing it to Apple, Android is better value. End of discussion. For what Android offers, um, yeah. In, in the case of Apple, Android is a better value because they, there are phones out there. I mean, you have things like Xiaomi phones that are pretty cheap you've got <laughs> see a lot of people say android is the most annoying shit ever to use but i don't think these people actually have sat down with like a proper android phone over the past five ten years sure when android first came out it was an absolute ball ache i'll be honest some of the old android phones and i had android the old ones were shit I would have had an iPhone any day of the week over that. Even now, I'll be honest, I prefer Apple because there's none of the hassles that Android has. But the one problem with Apple is it has no customizability and it's very restrictive on what you're allowed to do with the phone. And because of that, makes me not want to buy the Apple product. By all means, if Apple became a lot less restrictive, let you personalize a lot more stuff on the phone, um, what's it called? Um, better implementation with third party applications, being able to transfer files from a computer to whatever. Like, by all means, I would go Apple. But the problem is, they're so restrictive, they want you to have an Apple computer. And for the stuff that I want to do, programming. It is not as great on Apple. Apple is fucking killer for photo and video editing. But I don't just video edit with my build. 
Like, by all means, if I was to choose two PCs, and I have, like, a gaming system and a editing slash workstation, I would have an iMac and a fucking desktop, and then I would buy an iPhone. But I don't have the money for that. And that, again, like, the money side is also a problem because Apple products are too expensive for what they offer. But, at the same time, they are very much a simpleton device. Like, people who have little to no knowledge of phones, applications, and stuff like that, Apple is a... It can be a much easier thing. The back button still pisses me off, though. The fact that there's no back button on iPhone. Because some older programmed Apple applications... If the back button stops functioning on one of those applications, you're kind of fucked. You just have to quit out. <laughs> Cheers for stealing my money, Zeno. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Dig. Um, but yeah. It's um, quite a... I don't know. I think a lot of the... the what do you mean, liar? It does. It means you, you, you don't support the channel. Because then there's literally no monetary gain whatsoever from the content that I make. As soon as you use an ad block. If you use it on... The only time is if you subscribe. Like, by all means. If you're using an ad block, but you subscribe to the people that you watch, that's fair enough. Like, even if you're using the ad block, you try out watching some streams, and then you subscribe because you want to support them, that's alright, in my eyes. Like, it doesn't bother me that you use the ad block. But if you're watching someone's stream using an ad block, it means we don't earn any money. And by all means, you, you're fucking over Amazon, but the dent that you, you using an ad block does to Amazon is little to nothing. The dent that it does to a content creator is a lot larger, and especially a smaller content creator as well. That dent is multiplied. Like, if you think, uh, if I had four people in stream, but two of them use ad block, that's half of the ad revenue I could have been earning for that stream. Which, I mean, for a four-hour stream, it's not greedy money, though. That's the problem. A lot of people expect the internet to be free. Because that's what it was when it was just a hobby passion back in the 2000s. But the internet hasn't been a hobby passion for over 10, 15 years now. It's been businesses. Businesses run off of the internet. Stuff like that. And the thing is, if you are not willing to spend any money... I, this is going to be taken the wrong way. So if you take it the wrong way, you're an idiot. But if you're not willing to at least view adverts to pay for the content that you're viewing and you're also not willing to pay to just remove the adverts, then you shouldn't have a right to the internet. Simple as. Because the internet is not free. It hasn't been free for a while. And people do earn money through the internet and a lot of the time the easiest way watch a couple of ads you don't have to pay a penny so it's, it's a very touch and go situation a lot of people like ad blocks a lot of people don't like ad blocks i don't use ad block for the sole reason that i know even though i'd be fucking over youtube or twitch or whatever that doesn't bother me but I would be messing with a content creator's revenue. Which, I mean, if it was Jake Paul, I wouldn't give a fuck. <laughs> I hate Jake Paul. But anyone else, like, it is taken away from their money. That they're earning from making this content. You know. And content isn't free at the end of the day. It's not free. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like. Comment down below and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Peace <laughs> out.